Greetings, everybody. Turn your King James Bible to Ezekiel chapter 47. We're almost at the end of the series. Uh, this is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries in John 8, 12. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. And I got to admit, these last few chapters of Ezekiel are kind of underwhelming for me. Sort of like reading Leviticus, which, I don't know. I'd r much rather be reading uh, the New Testament, but I thought, okay, well, I'm going to do the series, so as long as I'm on YouTube, I'll do it. And by the way, keep an eye out for Gab. I'm on Gab, which is a fake book alternative. And uh, Torba, I think his name's Torba, supposed to be a Christian guy. I don't know what he believes, but um, I'll stir up some trouble there, probably. Uh, same thing with this KingJamesBibleOnline.org. Supposed to be a Christian group, too, but uh, they banned me twice. I mean, I didn't know that quoting Jesus is anti-Semitic. You know what I mean? Oh, I mean, you know, the you-know-who say Jesus is the most evil anti-Semite that ever lived. So, yeah, no thanks. Yeah, yeah, they would love to chop out certain chapters out of the Bible, like John chapter 8. Boy, I'll tell you what. But that's okay. So let's go. Ezekiel chapter 47. You know, on the previous video that I did on this one, uh, it says Thoughts 2021. I give you the link for uh, World Truth and for Gab. You can find my channel there. And uh, also, if you don't have my downloads, get the downloads. And if you want to load my work to another platform or whatever, I don't care. I'm going to try to warn the sheep for as long as I can. All right, Ezekiel 47, verse 1. Afterward, he brought me again unto the, house, uh, unto the door of the house. And behold, waters issued from under the threshold of the house eastward, for the forefront of the house stood toward the east, and the waters came down from under the right side of the house at the south side of the altar. And in a previous one of this, I tied this in with the um, living waters that came from the throne of God in Revelation. I think it's Revelation 22. It's either 20, 21, or 22. So, Then brought he me out of the way of the gate northward, and led me about the way without unto the utter gate by the way that looketh eastward, and behold, there ran... All right, let's see. Uh, I had to get some water there. Verse 2, Then brought he me out of the way of the gate northward, and led me about the way, without unto the utter gate, by the way that looketh eastward. And behold, there ran out waters on the right side. And when the man that had the line in his hand went forth eastward, he measured a thousand cubits, and he brought me through the waters. The waters were to the ankles. Verse 4, again, he measured a thousand and brought me through the waters. The waters were to the knees. Again, he measured a thousand and brought me through, and the waters were to the loins. Afterward, he measured a thousand, and it was a river that I could not pass over, for the waters were risen, waters to swim in, a river that could not be passed over. And he said unto me, Son of man, Hast thou seen this? Then he brought me and caused me to return to the brink of the river. 
Now, when I had returned, behold, at the bank of the river were very many trees on the one side and on the other. Then said he unto me, These waters issue out toward the east country, and go down into the desert, and go into the sea, which being brought forth into the sea, the waters shall be healed. And it came to pass that every thing that liveth, which moveth, whithersoever the rivers shall come, shall live, and there shall be a very great multitude of fish, because these waters shall come thither, for they shall be healed, and every thing shall live whither the river cometh. And every thing shall live whither the river cometh. I don't know if you remember, but when uh, Jesus was risen from the dead, and Peter and a couple of them were in the boat, uh, Jesus made fish, was uh, roasting fish on the shore. And uh, there's another heresy running around. It's, uh, supposedly the Dead Sea Scrolls, which I have absolutely no confidence in them at all. Uh, because the you-know-whos are in charge of the Dead Sea Scrolls, and they won't let anybody really investigate them. I mean, they're the ones releasing all the information. And then uh, there's some people called the Danoons, Stephen and Jana. And uh, yeah, she says, oh, Jesus was an Essene, E-S-S-E-N-E, -S -S -E -E, I think it is. It was supposed to be some kind of Jewish sect, which is not mentioned in the Bible. And Jesus was a vegetarian. He wouldn't hurt an animal, but he was cooking fish in my King James Bible. So uh, I guess, you know, a fish really doesn't count as an animal. Oh, well, Jesus wouldn't eat meat. Yeah, well, all I know is the uh, Bible has something to say about that. Now, in 1 Timothy chapter 4, uh, Timothy and Titus are considered the pastoral uh, epistles or letters. You know, they were for pastors. So 1 Timothy 4, verse 1. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly, that in the latter times, or the last days, that in the latter times, some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, speaking lies in hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron. Uh, guys, what do you do at a barbecue? You know, what do you do with a steak? You sear it so that uh, it's not dry like a piece of shoe leather. You sear the outside. Well, what do you think God does to their conscience? He sears it with a hot iron because they depart from the faith. They give heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. They speak lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron. You're in a bad way when the Lord does that to you. Listen to this, verse 3. Forbidding to marry. Is there a group of people that forbid marriage among their clergy? Yeah, they're in, their uh, headquarters is uh, Vatican City in Rome. Forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from meats vegetarianism which God hath created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth for every creature of God is good and nothing to be refused if it be received with thanksgiving and uh, that's not talking about unclean meats God didn't create rats and vultures to be food 
you know, uh, that you're talking about the, the clean meats that God wanted us to eat. And those of you who like pigs, just remember something. You know what they do with medical waste? Abortions. There was a farmer, pig farmer, buying that stuff up and feeding it to his pigs. Yeah. But they don't talk about that. You won't see that on the news. Matter of fact, there was a investigative journalist that um, caught uh, Planned Parenthood breaking federal law, selling aborted baby parts, and exposed it. And there was a district attorney out in California that instead of prosecuting the people breaking federal law by selling the aborted baby parts, went after the journalist. And guess what? who she is? She's our current vice president. Yeah. Yeah. Think about that. Forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from meats. Oh, Jesus was a vegetarian and we should emulate Jesus and the Essenes. Where's this in the Bible? It's not. Jesus cooked fish. Liars. Speaking lies and hypocrisy. Having their conscience seared with a hot iron. But boy, if they got the word rabbi after their or before their name. Oh, oh, the church just falls over. Oh, they're so knowledgeable. But that chaplain, Bob, he's a he's a anti-semite and a racist and a uh, what anything else you can think of he's a hater yeah what would jesus do uh take a a, a, a whip of cords and uh whip people out of the temple over throwing the money changers table is not beyond uh expectations of things he would do right oh yeah all right, well, just so nobody calls me a liar, John chapter 21, verse 1. After these things, Jesus showed himself again to the disciples at the Sea of Tiberias, and on this wise showed he himself. There were together Simon Peter and Thomas called Didymus and Nathanael of Cana in Galilee and the sons of Zebedee and two other disciples. So let's see, that's one, two, three, Four, five, six, seven. That's like seven of the disciples. Simon Peter saith unto them, I go a fishing. And they said unto him, We also go with thee. They went forth and entered into a ship immediately, and that night they caught nothing. See, without Jesus, what can you do? Nothing. But when the morning was now come, Jesus stood on the shore, but the disciples knew not that it was Jesus. Then Jesus saith unto them, Children, have ye any meat? They answered him, No. And he said unto them, Cast the net on the right side of the ship, and ye shall find. They cast therefore, and now they were not able to draw it for the multitude of fishes. That thing was so full they couldn't even put it into the ship. So I guess they're going to have to drag it to shore, you know, because they can't, <laughs> they can't, it's so much weight they can't even put it in the ship, you know. Therefore the disciple whom Jesus loved saith unto Peter, It is the Lord. Now when Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he girded his fisher's coat unto him, for he was naked, and did cast himself into the sea. That's a good way to get a tan, right? And the other disciples came in a little ship, for they were not far from land, but as it were two hundred cubits, dragging the net with fishes. And as soon as they were come to land, they saw a fire of coals there and fish laid thereon and bread. Ah, Jesus had a fire of coals there, fish laid thereon and bread. But Jesus wasn't a scene. He was a vegetarian. Oh, shut up. Verse 10, 
Jesus saith unto them, Bring of the fish which ye have now caught. Uh, Simon Peter went up and drew the net to land, full of great fishes, and hundred and fifty and three. For And for all there were so many, yet was not the net broken. Jesus saith unto them, Come and dine. But, but Jesus, you're, you're a vegetarian. You're, whoa, what, fish? No, you can't eat fish. You're in a scene. Ah, uh, liars. Conscience is seared with a hot iron. Jesus saith unto them, Come and dine. And none of the disciples durst ask him, Who art thou, knowing that it was the Lord? Jesus then cometh and taketh bread and giveth them and fish likewise. This is now the third time that Jesus showed himself to his disciples after that he was risen from the dead. You won't ever hear Jana de Noon uh, reading this verse. Uh-uh. All right. Uh, back to Ezekiel 47, or verse 10. And it shall come to pass that the fishers shall stand upon it from Angadi, even unto angle lamb they shall be a place to spread forth nets their fish shall be according to their kinds as the fish of the great sea exceeding many but the miry places thereof and the marshes thereof shall not be healed they shall be given to salt huh and by the river upon the bank thereof on this side and on that side shall grow all trees for meat. Um, meat used to just mean uh, eating of food. Take away the M and what do you got? E-A-T. Eat. Today, meat means uh, animal protein, like a steak. But back in the old, back, you know, 400 years ago, if somebody says, I have some fruit for uh, for meat, well, you've heard of, I've heard people refer to uh, the meat of the fruit, but modern usage has changed a little bit, so. Uh, shall grow all trees for meat, whose leaf shall not fade, neither shall the fruit thereof be consumed. It shall bring forth new fruit according to his months, because there are waters they issued out of the sanctuary, and the fruit thereof shall be for meat, and the leaf thereof for medicine. Uh, sorry, no pharmaceutical companies uh, here. I don't think, uh, no, no. Mr. Goldberg's going to have to get a new job, the pharmacist. Yeah, he's going to have a new job, all right. Thus saith the Lord God, This shall be the border, whereby ye shall inherit the land, according to the twelve tribes of Israel. Ah, twelve tribes. Joseph shall have two portions. Joseph is going to have a double portion. Why? He had two sons. Ephraim and Manasseh. Verse 14, And ye shall inherit it, one as well another, concerning the which I lifted up mine hand to give it unto your fathers, and this land shall fall unto you for inheritance. And this shall be the border of the land toward the north sea, from the great sea, the way of Hethlon, as men go to Zedad, Hamoth, Baroth, Ah, Sibram, which is between the border of Damascus and the border of Hamath, Hazor Hadakon, which is by the coast of Haran, and the border from the sea shall be Hazarinan, the border of Damascus, and the north, northward, and the border of Hamath, and this is the north side. And the east side ye shall measure from Hauran, and from Damascus, and from Gilead, and from the land of Israel by Jordan, from the border unto the east sea, and this is the east side. 
and the south side uh, and the south side southward from Tamar even to the waters of strife in Kadesh the river to the great sea and this is the south side southward the west side also shall be the great sea from the border till a man come over against Hamath this is the west side so shall ye divide this land unto you according to the tribes of Israel and it shall come to pass that ye shall divide it by lot for an inheritance unto you and to the strangers that sojourn among you which shall beget begat children among you interesting so all those um, my guess is all those aborted children children that died in childbirth are that are resurrected to grow up in the kingdom are going to be given a chance to live get married live normal lives i suppose it'll be our some of us is our responsibility to teach them the ways of the lord if any of us be found worthy because uh and they're going to grow up without satan for a thousand years he's going to be bound for a thousand years where's that chaplain Bob well we'll get to that in a minute um, which shall begat children among you and they shall be unto you as born in the country among the children of Israel they shall have inheritance with you among the tribes of Israel and it shall come to pass that in what tribe the stranger sojourneth there shall ye give him his inheritance, saith the Lord God. All right. Uh, they're going to grow up in the what they call the Millennial Kingdom. Milli is a Latin word. It just means thousand. And, you know, there's a lot of Latin words in English. And you got heretics like James White, they'll say, oh, Latin doesn't belong in English. Uh, well, I guess taco doesn't belong in English either. Because that's Spanish, right? Enchilada, don't say enchilada either. You know, millimeter. Don't use that word, Mr. James White. That's Latin. And don't use the word ultra either. And don't use the word corpse that's Latin too there's a bunch of Latin words English is about 20% Latin and then he'll argue and say that in Isaiah 14 the word Lucifer doesn't belong in the Bible because it's a Latin word it means light bearer you know as an angel angel of light you know Satan's transformed into an angel of light therefore it doesn't belong in the Bible and he lies so well with a straight face and makes a you know convincing thing i think god blinds the people's eyes that listen to people like him so which is fine with me you know hey okay, people didn't believe the apostles people most people didn't believe the uh prophets you know a remnant a remnant revelation chapter 20 and I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years. Ah. And cast him into the bottomless pit and shut him up and set a seal upon him that he should deceive the nations no more till the thousand years should be fulfilled and after that he must be loosed a little season see all those children that are going to grow up in the kingdom are going to have a thousand years without satan to be taught And then Satan's going to be loosed. And believe it or not, there's going to be a lot of people following Satan. 
Uh, verse 4, And I saw thrones, and they sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus. This won't be the pre-trib rapture crowd. They'll, I'll kind of guarantee you they're going to deny Jesus. See, see, we told you that Jesus was a false messiah. You thought you were going to be pre-trib raptured out of here. Well, where's Jesus now? So you either deny Jesus or we cut your head off. Uh, okay, Rabbi, uh, I'll deny, yeah. Yeah, you, you get the idea. Yeah. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands, and they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. And people, that's just the introduction. But the rest of the dead lived not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection. On such the second death hath no power. But they shall be priests of God and of Christ, and shall reign with him a thousand years. And when the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison, and he shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four quarters of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them together to battle, the number of whom is as the sand of the sea. Boy, I'll tell you what. Uh, last I checked, there was well over 65 million children aborted in the United States. And that was years ago. That's an entire generation gone. And that's just the U.S. That's not Germany. That's not Austria. That's not Australia. That's not France, England, New Zealand. You know, think about it. How many millions and millions of children are going to be given a chance to grow up in the thousand years? So the number of whom is as the sand of the sea. And they went up on the breadth of the earth and compass the camp of the saints about and the beloved city and fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them uh, that's going to be a quick battle verse 10 and the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever Uh, when people tell you that anybody can be saved, point out that the beast and the false prophet were born to be destroyed right here. Verse, verse 10, Revelation 20, 10. Uh, verse 11. And I saw a great white throne and him that sat on it from whose faith the earth and the heaven fled away and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God and the books were opened and another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. You know, we're going to be judged according to our works. Salvation is by grace, but your position in the kingdom and or your or your either reward or your punishment, depending upon which side of the fence you are, 
is going to be according to your works. Verse 13. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it. Boy, there's going to be a whole bunch of that in the Pacific Ocean. World War II, boy. U.S. and Japan, right? A lot. A lot of people. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them, and they were judged every man according to their works. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Wow. So, sounds like, uh, sounds like the Lord has a plan. And I hope I'm part of that plan, so. All right, everybody, all blessings, praise, glory, and honor to God the Father and His only begotten Son, Jesus, who is the Christ, the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor. In Jesus' name, amen.